Hi, I'm Ross Knepper. I'm a postdoc at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And today I'm talking about IKEABot, which is a multi-robot autonomous furniture assembly system. Um, the system starts from a set of CAD files that describe the individual components of the system, of the, the part that you want to assemble. So for example, we're assembling the LAC table. Uh, it, the CAD file says that there's four table legs, each one has a hole, and there's one table top which has four holes in it. And the system goes from that to infer that the, the holes in the legs match up with the holes in the parts. From there it moves on to construct a symbolic plan which describes the order in which these are, are attached together. We've devised our own symbolic planning language called ABPL, uh, which is an object-oriented symbolic planning language. Um, it has the notion of groups, so you can say that there's four identical table legs which are interchangeable. Um, and this actually expedites the planning process quite a bit. So you're not actually using the IKEA instructions that we're, come with the table? That's right. We're, we're just like many Americans would do. We throw out that instruction book because we can't read it in this case. It's entirely pictorial. And we haven't quite solved that computer vision problem yet. So um, we decided it's actually easier to go from the, the individual CAD files. Uh, in fact, we don't even give it the goal of what the assembled kit is supposed to look like. It figures that out for itself. Wow. Um, and it turns out that in the case of a lot of IKEA kits, there's only one unique final configuration that, that works. Um, so sometimes there's, sort of, say, a, a left and right-handed desk. Um, but that's usually the limit of the ambiguity. Okay. Um, so that's a great thing about IKEA for, for our purposes. Um, so once we've figured out the uh, assembly uh, sequence, then we need to actually execute to build the, the, uh, the kit. And this is done using multiple robots. Uh, they, they divide up based on capabilities. So some robots are able to do delivery. Uh, they know where parts can be found. So you can imagine in a factory sort of a parts feeder, that kind of thing. Um, and then separately from that, we also have assembly robots, which know the blueprint, and they know how to assemble things. Um, so we have, in, in the case of the lac table, we have a specialized screwing device, um, which I can show you briefly. Um, so it looks like this. And you can see it's a, a pair of rings coupled together, and they're, they're coupled using these rubber bands, which gives you a natural compliance so that you can screw and unscrew a variety of different shapes and sizes of objects. Um, can, it, can it handle objects that are fragile or...? To, yeah, to, to a certain extent, yeah. I, I, I haven't tried a wine glass yet. I, I don't see why it wouldn't work with that, but... Um, we could do a soda bottle with that. We could do a light bulb. Yeah. So the, it's based, basically it's based on the, um, how, how tight the rubber bands are. And also on the, on the back side, we add a little bit of friction in this ring here using magnets. Um, so the stronger the magnets are, obviously, the, the tighter the grip is going to be. So... Um, yeah, so this actually will fit right onto the gripper uh, on our U-Bots at home. And then when it's not using it, there's a dock that goes on the front. So it can actually put it away and then slip it on like a glove when it wants to use the, uh, when it wants to use the tool. Okay, so they, they put the table together. So they assemble the table in a, in a team fashion. If there's multiple assembly robots, they'll actually partition the work amongst themselves for, uh, for greater parallelism. Um, so they assemble the table, and then when they're done, they actually flip it over. So this involves tight coordination. Uh, the master robot, which is the assembly robot tasked with doing the flipping, has to recruit an assistant, which is going to be another U-bot that's involved in the, in the assembly task. And um, they move through a coordinated sort of a kinematic motion uh, using the idea of a virtual hinge on the corner of the table. 
um, and they do that twice, and then that upside table gets flipped upright. That's basically the system in a nutshell. There's a lot of extensions that we're exploring uh, right now involving incorporating humans. So either humans that just want to help on their own or sometimes you need to ask for help uh, if something goes wrong. Uh, we're exploring how can the robot formulate a natural language request for help that a human can then uh, intervene briefly just to do what the robot asks for and then let the robot become autonomous once again. So this way, if you have a system that's maybe 95% autonomous, it's, it's still vastly more capable than a system that had to be strictly 100% autonomous. I should say the, the language work is in collaboration with Stephanie Tellex at MIT. And going forward, is this a system that can be adapted to work on other types of robots besides u -box? Absolutely, yeah. Um, we don't make any assumptions other than the hardware for the gripper. There's no assumptions about the particular form of the robots that we're using. Uh, we need IK, we need you know basic things that any any manipulator robot is going to have, any mobile manipulator. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you very much.